This is Spoken Gospel. We're dedicated to seeing Jesus in all of Scripture. In each episode, we see what's happening in a biblical text and how it sheds light on Jesus and his gospel. Let's jump in. Like Psalms 37 through 39, Psalm 40 is another cry for deliverance from the consequences of sin. David never mentions what he did to receive God's discipline, just that his suffering is overwhelming and that God has always been faithful to save him. David describes his past disobedience as being stuck in a slimy pit. In contrast, God's salvation lifts him up and gives him firm footing. David knows that people who trust in the Lord will always be saved. Israel's past is so full of stories of God's deliverance that people would exhaust themselves trying to retell them all. And through his sufferings and discipline, David has learned that offering empty sacrifices is never what God really wants. God wants pierced or open ears with hearts that are attentive and love to do what God desires. Perhaps David is being disciplined for the sin of hypocrisy. But regardless, David now praises God for his justice in disciplining and for his love in saving him. Back in Psalm 39, David was silent because of his sin, but now he's loud with praise. Knowing all of this, David asks for mercy again. He asks God to deliver him from the enemies that God sent as a punishment for his sin. And he also asks God to save everyone who seeks and waits for God and for his salvation. The prophet Isaiah warned that if Israel turned to other nations and other gods, they would be exiled. And in this psalm, David offers the same warning as a promise. Anyone who does not look to proud rulers or turn to false gods will be blessed. Their enemies will be shamed. But Israel didn't listen to David or Isaiah. And like David, Israel fell into hypocritical patterns of worship. Isaiah hoped for a day when a new king from David's line would reign in Israel and the closed eyes, ears, and hearts of her people would finally be pierced and opened. And that king that Isaiah hoped for is Jesus. Even when we are blind and deaf, trusting ourselves more than God, Jesus opens our eyes and our ears to love God and love his law. That's why Jesus heals a deaf man in the Gospel of Mark and ends many of his parables with the phrase, whoever has ears, let them hear. It's Jesus' way of revealing that we need his help if we're ever gonna see and hear. Closed ears are the consequence of our failure to trust God. Closed eyes are punishment for religious hypocrisy and blatant sin. But Jesus comes to open our ears, open our eyes, transform our hearts, and bless those who trust him. When we turn away from trusting ourselves, others, or idols, the Apostle Paul says that the eyes of our hearts will be opened. We will see our hope and God's power to save when we're surrounded by enemies or stuck in a muddy pit of our sin. And like the blind man, our eyes will be opened to the truth that God sees us. He sees you and me as an inheritance, as a treasure worth dying to receive. So I pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see the God who lifts us out of the pit. And may you see Jesus as the one who opens our ears and hearts to hope in God's salvation and power.